Minister, there has been a, a public notion that the cost of living is expected or is projected to increase at the end of the year by 4.1% uh, when the Bank of Guyana's report has something that is uh, basically a, away from that. Can you give, shed some light on, on what that really is? Well, in fact, the Bank of Guyana report does not say what that particular newspaper headline suggests that it said. So let's take a step back. A few days ago, it was brought to my attention. I hadn't seen it originally, but somebody brought to my attention that the headline was carried in a tabloid newspaper in Guyana that said, cost of living set to double, in quotation marks, says Bank of Guyana report. And I'm saying publicly, the placement of that phrase in quota quotation marks mean something. Quotation marks mean that it's a quotation. That phrase does not exist in the Bank of Guyana report. And to place that phrase in quotation marks, suggesting that it is a direct extract from the Bank of Guyana report and suggesting that the bank, and it used the word warns, cost of living set to double, in quotation marks, warns Bank of Guyana report. To do so when such a phrase was never used in the Bank of Guyana report is downright dishonest. And it constitutes a blatant misrepresentation of what was said in the Bank of Guyana report. What the Bank of Guyana report simply said is that in the first quarter of the year, the consumer price index had increased by 1.7%, which is, the consumer price index is, an, is a basket of, is a composite basket of prices comprising several commodities, and it measures how the prices of these commodities have overall increased. So we monitor prices for this basket every month. What the report said is that the consumer price index had increased by 1.7% in the first quarter, and it gave an outlook for the remainder of the year of, I think, 4.2% of the or thereabouts, which is what we had been projecting at that time for, as inflation for the rest of the, for the full year. The movement of inflation from 1.7% for the first quarter to 42 for the full year could not possibly be interpreted to mean that cost of living will be doubling. And anybody with basic Little, n numerical skills will understand that 4.2% inflation could not possibly mean doubling of cost of living. The second point I want to make is that we recognize that, of course, there is an issue with price movement around the world. Countries are facing price pressure as a result of imported commodities, fuel prices have been increasing, food prices have been increasing. You know, pick up the newspapers or Google or read BBC or read CNN or read Bloomberg or read Reuters. These stories are all over the world. The fact of the matter is that fuel prices have increased worldwide. Food prices have increased worldwide. The international supply chain has been disrupted as a result of which there is shortage of supply and increased cost of shipping. The war in Russia and Ukraine has disrupted production and supply of key commodities like wheat. As you know, Russia and Ukraine account for 30% of global production and export of wheat. And so we recognize this as a government. We recognize that this is a global phenomenon that is having domestic impact. And we have been proactive in responding to it. We have taken off taxes from a number of items, but in particular, we have taken off taxes completely from fuel. So we started from a point when we came into government, the fuel taxes were at their standard rate of 50%. As the price increased, we removed it from, we reduced it from 50 to 35, and then from 35 to 10, and then we brought it down from 10 to zero. So right now, we're not collecting any taxes on diesel and gasoline, refined fuel products. As you know, we took off the VAT on basic food items. We did one, that was one of the first things that we did. 
We want to make the cost of production of food domestically cheaper, so we have provided a special allocation of $1 billion to subsidize fertilizers for farmers. We are aggressively promoting increased food production as a means of ensuring that there's adequate supply domestically, which will help to regulate prices domestically as well. We are providing cash grants directly to households starting this year with a special grant to Riverine and, and, uh, and Hinterland communities. That's going to cost us about a billion dollars, one, about $1.2 billion. And so these are all measures that we're implementing aimed at cushioning the impact of imported price pressure on domestic consumers. Recognizing we live in the real world, we recognize that this is a global phenomenon. Inflation is a very serious matter worldwide. It's a matter that you know, worries uh, economic is worrying economic policymakers globally right now. And we are very much plugged into that global discourse. We are aware of the global discussions. We are participating in them. We recognize that it's a global problem. We are doing all that we can domestically, and we will continue to do all that we can domestically. My call to domestic producers is that now is the time to increase your production. To all of the, our food producers, now is the time to increase your production. If you're a farmer, if you have livestock, if you grow vegetables or fruits, now is the time to increase your production. Because obviously there is a market, a vibrant market for your produce, you're getting good prices, now is the opportunity to increase production. And so we are certainly not insensitive. You know, the president himself has gone on several walkabouts in the markets. I accompanied him to Leonora and Parika markets. You know, we are visiting other, we've been to several other markets, we're monitoring constantly what's going on. We're talking to farmers constantly to encourage them to increase um, um, production. And we're looking down the road. We want to start producing wheat domestically too. So we're doing experimental uh, uh, cultivation of tropical varieties of wheat. We want to reduce the cost of uh, animal feed, so we're working on the corn and soybean project. Once corn and soybean come on stream, we'll be able to produce those commodities, which are critical inputs into animal feed, which will then bring down the cost of animal feed and therefore bring down the cost of meat. So we are adopting short-term measures, like the cash grants to the households, like the encouragement to the farmers to get back into production and to increase their production. And we're also adopting medium and longer term measures like the corn and soybean project, like the opening up of new acreage for cultivation, like the tropical varieties of wheat project. So what you see there is a government that is very much aware of this global inflationary period that we're going through, and a government that is being extremely proactive in responding to it. Households have a role to play as well also, like I said, in responding, like there's a golden opportunity now for people to actually start planting something or rearing some animals. There's a golden opportunity here to do that. So what you see here is a government that is, that is being proactive in uh, responding to the global realities that we're observing, both in the short term and in the medium term. We are engaging in the global policy discussion as well. You've seen our president's proactive role in the uh, discussion on uh, food security in the region. Um, and we are also uh, um, encor uh, encouraging, you know, at a micro level. You know, I was about to say that we're distributing planting materials and breeding stock to farmers who want. We have the Black Giant project, which we're implementing. We have the Black Belly Sheep project, which we're implementing. We're distributing planting material. Those are all things that we're implementing, all with the aim of ensuring that we ramp up domestic food production. But to come back to where we started, there is clearly a, the, the story to which you refer clearly had the intention to completely misrepresent the facts as they relate to, relate to inflation and to generate public excitement. That there could have, there, there could be no other conclusion but that.